Hey, welcome back. Today I have a rather short video with hopefully a really neat trick you might have run into before. Because if we look on the right side, you see that I sort of replicated the Tesla Model 3 main hero component. And that component actually has a thing that you might have encountered before. For this page, or actually for this hero, we are using the 100 viewport height unit. And if we look at this on desktop, everything looks okay. If we scroll down, we see that there should be more of the content, which I did not create. But what you should notice is that the image is exactly the height of my screen here. However, the main issue lies into when we go to mobile. So what I did is I opened up the same page on my iPhone as well. And what you see here is Safari showing exactly the same page. And the first thing you notice is that the call to action is pretty much below the address bar, which in this case is the worst thing that can happen because it's the most important call to action, right? Only if we scroll down, we see that the room is still there. And actually, if we remove the address bar and try to stop scrolling at the right position, you kind of see that it is exactly the height of the screen, but only when the address bar is collapsed. And this is exactly the behavior 100 viewport height has on mobile devices. That viewport height is the height of the screen when everything is in their collapsed state. As soon as you go to the expanded state, everything will be too large. And this all started with Safari who implemented this in kind of the wrong way, you can argue. But in order to have some more consistency across mobile browsers, other browsers unfortunately started adopting this as well. So what happens, all of the mobile browsers have now implemented it in kind of the same way, which is awkward. So if we look at the code on the right side, you see that I created a really basic HTML page, even with inline styles and definitely read this disclaimer. It, it's not meant to be the best CSS. It's simply to have a page to look at and to discuss this topic. So what you see here is that this page, if we go to the HTML, has a main hero component and that hero component has the title and all the specs. And underneath there, there is another fake section and that fake section is just meant so we have something to scroll. And if we go to the CSS, we see that we have some styles applied to that hero section. And that is also where the most important part of this code lies. Because in here, we specify that the hero is 100 viewport height. And that's again where this issue on mobile arises. So there is a few routes you can take. Right now, the most used way to, to fix this is by instead of using 100 VH, you use height and then dash webkit fill available. But there's also some relative things towards the parent going on here. So it, it, it needs kind of a bit of finicking to get this to work because it's not really tied to the viewport. It's actually tied to the room that's currently available. So this is perhaps if you try to solve the 100 VH currently the most used solution for this. However, recently there have been a few new changes in this. And that is actually what I want to show you in this video. Because there is a few new features that are actually already supported pretty well in a lot of browsers, also on mobile Safari. So the first new property that you can use for this is 100 SVH. And we can, of course, disable the 100 VH because we're not using that right now. But what you see happens is now we set the 100 SVH. S stands for small in this case. So smallest viewport height. And what happens is that this is the height with all of the toolbars on mobile in their expanded state. So if we scroll down, nothing will happen. And also if the scroll bars are in their collapsed state, you see that we suddenly have too much space. But depending on what you're building, this could be exactly what you need. Or, and maybe you already guessed it, next to smallest viewport height, we also have the largest viewport height. And the largest viewport height unit 
always is equal to the height of the viewport in their collapse state. So this is pretty similar to what 100VH used to do before. So you see that if everything is collapsed, that this now is 100% of the viewport height. And even if we scroll up and all of the toolbars expand again, it is still the height of the collapsed state. One other trick people tend to use before when calculating the VH unit was, for example, with JavaScript setting a variable equal to the height of 100 viewport height or perhaps one viewport height, so you can do a calc around it. So they used, for example, calc and then um, 100 times viewport height, for example, where viewport height would be a unit you set that's 1% of the current screen height. And with that calculation, if you run that also on resize of the browser, you could update the height based on whether it's an expanded or collapsed state. However, again, there is now a really neat new feature that you can also use because Next to the smallest viewport height and the largest viewport height, there is also a dynamic viewport height unit you can use. And that dynamic viewport height unit can be used pretty much for exactly this. So if we set it to 100% dynamic viewport height, then we see that if it's in the expanded state, everything fits perfectly. And as soon as we start scrolling down, you see a jump happen. If we go up again, you see a jump happen in the image. And that is because the height is resizing. As soon as it goes either from the expanded to the collapsed state, this unit grows or scales down. And again, depending on your use case, that can be exactly what you want. But the jumping might not be the prettiest thing. So perhaps you want to stick with the smallest or the highest viewport height always. But having these options is super nice in making sure that you can get the exact design you want. And you don't need any JavaScript anymore for this. And if we look at can I use this website, you see that browser support is actually also already pretty good. It's supported in all of the latest versions in Chrome, Edge, Firefox, Safari, which are all of the main browsers, I think. And of course, what you can do is always add the 100 VH on top of the dynamic viewport height, because in that case, as soon as this becomes an invalid selector, because the browser doesn't support it, it will automatically fall back to the previous one. So that could also be a fallback you implement if you need to support other browsers. And to show you exactly what's happening when you're scrolling, I created this really ugly page that hopefully demonstrates it pretty well. So all of the columns have their respective names. They either use 100 VH, SVH, 100 largest viewport height, or 100 dynamic viewport height. And if you look at the page in their expanded state, you see that everything seems to be exactly the same. However, don't get fooled. As soon as I start scrolling, you see a few interesting things happen. Firstly, the 100 viewport height and the 100 largest viewport height they stay in place. But you also notice that they already were grown beyond their boundaries. So they were the height of the screen in collapsed state. The second element, the 100 smallest viewport height, that did not change at all because that will stay the height the browser has in their expanded state. So if you scroll up and down, it will always remain the same. And the last column, you probably already noticed the dynamic viewport height, it jumps. As soon as I scroll, you see that it resizes, but it doesn't do this in any nice animated way or it also doesn't do it frame by frame. It, it differs a little bit per browser the way it does it, but take into account that there will be a delay before it updates it. So you will always see a jump unless you probably put some animation on there yourself, but it's good to know that that's at least a default behavior. So I hope that this example clearly shows you how these four differ from each other and which can be used in what situation. In my opinion, I guess it makes sense to use the smallest viewport height because in that case you don't have a jump at all, which is the nicest looking, I think. But depending on your use case, one or the other could also be really valuable. But I think these units will be units you will start seeing a lot more pretty soon because they're really valuable and they work in the way you expect it. 
at least you have control over how they work by using one of the three values instead of always 100 VH and perhaps adding some JavaScript in the mix. So I hope with this really short video, you learned something super useful. I did link the code down below, so absolutely check that out if you want to see exactly how I implemented this. But keep in mind, all of the other CSS is really very basic just to have a page set up and not any production ready code. Mainly focus on the viewport height units. And of course, next to viewport height, these units are also available for viewport width. But for this demonstration, I think only showing viewport height would be more than enough and perhaps also the most used use case. So please leave a like and a comment below if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to the channel and I hope to see you in the next video.